So good morning. So uh, on the way getting ready this morning, we uh, had Berea get sick. Uh, she's running a temperature of 102. So we got up and we ate a little bit of uh, ice cream and played a little bit of games. And I decided it's time to wake everybody else up. It's fun having toddlers because I get to act like how I normally act, a toddler. <laughs> uh, this morning, we had a good good amount come out the first wave on the van. I don't know what we got the second wave, but I, we had more than normal. Uh, it's a big tribute to all the hard work that you guys did this last week with the Crusades. Man, it's just been exciting times here. It's exciting to serve the Lord. But you know, one of the things that we have to have is faith. We had to have faith that the Crusades were going to go big. We have to have faith uh, that uh, things will work out. We have to have faith on what we're going to do next. And so... Our message, my message this morning for you guys is faith bigger than a giant. Uh, we're going to go to 1 Samuel uh, chapter 17. We're going to be in verses 24 through 26. And, uh, you know, we, we often think about David and Goliath, and we think about the, the, we, the little lad and the big giant and just how God used David. But I want to point out a couple of things about David's faith, but also something that goes hand in hand with faith, and that is knowledge. We get to uh, 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 24 through 16. Before I start this, I'll, I'll give you a little comedy relief. Uh, Joey was hoping I'd come up with a clever title like The Crayon Thrower or something like that. And, I, and I'll try next time to get a unique, funny title. But uh, right now, we're just going to focus on our faith. So uh, 1 Samuel 17, verses 24 through 26, and it says this. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him. And were sore afraid. And the men of Israel said, Have ye seen this man that cometh up? Hang on right there. The first thing that we see here is a lot of times we relate things to what we visibly see. What we visibly see sometimes trumps what we, can, what we believe God can do. Can I tell you something? When it comes to our finances, when it comes to our uh, ability to, to serve the Lord, when it comes to just what God can do. Sometimes we, we don't let God do what he can do because we let our eyes determine what God can do. These men right here are soldiers. They're getting ready to line up against Goliath, and they see a mighty, mighty man, a big man, and they tremble. Why? Because of their sight. We move on just a little bit more, and we see this. Surely to, to, to defy Israel is he come up, and it shall be that the man who killeth him... The king will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. So this was going to be a big feat if somebody defeated him. This is going to be a big thing for Israel. And David spoke to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine and taketh away the reproach from Israel for who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Hang on right there. Look at how David views this giant. Uncircumcised Philistine, regular man. His vision is different than everybody else's. He doesn't see a giant. He sees a regular man. You know what? David, when we go on and look at his lineage, when we look at his heritage, we see that he was a man that had faith. He had parents. He had, he had uh, an upbringing that was in God's word. Can I tell you something? Having your children in church is very important. What we just did with the Crusades, we want to see people get saved. But we want to see those little kids get raised up in the word. We want to hear them, see them get God's word, grasp it, because you know what? It changes your viewpoint on everything. Can I tell you something else? David doesn't see a monster, a big giant guy, an adversary. He just sees an average man that God can deal with. We go on just a little bit more, and we see this. He says that he should defy the armies of the living God, the living God, the living God. Defy the armies of the living God. He believes God, he believes God can conquer anybody, can conquer anything. Can I tell you something? You only get that if you know God's word. You know, when, when you have trials, when it's financial or it's medical or it's, it's what God can do with you, you you're going to lack confidence unless you have God's word. Can I tell you something else? David, because he knew God's promises, he had confidence that God would provide for him, that God would meet his needs, that God would provide a way. You know, he only has that because he knows God's word. Can I tell you something else? We will not have confidence in our trials and in our storms if we don't believe that God can and God will provide a way. You know, 
sometimes the, afflic the afflictions and the objects that are in our way seem mightier than what we can handle, but they aren't mightier than what God can handle. I have written down here, David knew God's promises for the people. Hey, when we know God's promises, it makes even the most scary circumstances easy, you know, attainable. David had faith in God and his promises so much that he could stand in front of a real physical danger in Goliath and have faith that God was going to pull him through. You know, that's the faith that we need. That's the faith we need moving this church forward. That's the faith we need in ministry. That's the faith we need with our family. That's the faith we need when, hey, guess what? Sometimes we can't see the end of the light. We can't see the end of the tunnel. We can't see the next thing that's going to happen. We just have the faith that we're in God's will and we're doing what God wants us to do. Easier said than done. A lot easier when you're in God's word praying and searching it out daily. So, uh, I have down here, who wants to have faith like David? Faith like David only comes from spending time with God. Can I ask you, today, this morning, how much time have you spent with God? I got up at 4.30. I already knew what my message was going to be. Started spending some time with God. I, I, I dealt with Berea. And you want to hear something? Little kids pick up on things real fast. Berea can sing, sing the Bible songs at age two, a lot of them, perfectly fine. You start them, and she'll start singing them. Can I tell you something? If you don't spend time with your family, if you don't spend time with your kids, you know, they aren't going to have the resources to go back on. They can't go back on what's in their knowledge of God because they don't have it. Uh, Proverbs 22, 6 says this, Train up your children in the ways he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. You know what? They can't go, you know, they can't grasp what they don't have. You know, we, we work a job, we put money in the bank account, and, and, and unless, we put, unless we don't put money in the bank account, you know, we can't pull from it. But the more money we put in there, we can pull from it when we need it. The more Bible that you have, the more prayer time that you have where things are answered, the more that you can reach back in that bank and say, God, God provided. You know, I, I carry a, a little uh, notepad, and I, I wrote thing, write down every time God answers a prayer. I write them down because, can I tell you something? It's very easy to get discouraged with this world. It's very easy to get discouraged. This last week, I, I started the week, uh, I wanted to be here with you guys. I was told I was going to get to come in later. Then somebody quit, and I couldn't even come in half the week. Then on Wednesday, I got told there was no night shift next week, and I don't know what I'm doing for a job. Then the next day, I get told, hey, uh, we're getting rid of half your people. Uh, go tell them. You know how, how much fun it is to go stand there and tell people, hey, you don't have a job next week. W worst feeling. Friday, I come rolling in. I've about had enough. You know, I want to be here with you guys. I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do. I come in. I get an email. Hey, rally them up. We're actually going to run next week. How do I rally up people that you already kicked out of the building? I, I, I'm baffled. But, you know, I, I had, you know, when we're going through these trials, Sarah goes, what are we going to do? What are we going to do uh, next week? And I go, well, the Bible says worry about tomorrow when tom you know, tomorrow will worry about itself. And that's paraphrasing in Jameson language. But, you know, <laughs> but, you know we don't worry about things we can't control. And uh, I, my game plan was, well, if I can't control it, I'm just going to go read a little bit of my Bible. I'm going to go fish, and God will sort it out. By Friday, he sorted it out. We're working, so that's a, that's a blessing. But uh, can I tell you something else? A younger, a younger version of me would have been tearing up the hillsides, trying to find anything and everything to get out of here, get, get a job, get something going. I would have been showing up at uh, Joey's workplace saying I could throw brick let me in, but uh, God, you know, now with having knowledge of God's word and having some peace, I know that no matter what, God will provide and God will be good. David knew the word of God because his fathers knew God. You know, do your children know that you know God? Do your children know that you know God? You know, Josh, you're going to have a little one. You know, one of the most terrifying things as a parent is misleading your children, misleading your children. You know, we, we say, have home discipleship, have uh, devotions, yet a lot of times we don't even know where to start. Can I tell you something? You know, most of us didn't know how to cook until we got out on our own. We, we made it. Some of us ate macaroni and cheese a lot. My, 
For me, it was turn on the barbecue and throw bratwurst on until they bust open. And I'm like, we're good. We know where they're cooked and they're going to be great. I survived. You know, if you just give them something, give them something. Read the Bible. Just read it. You don't have to pull out Bible truths. Just give them knowledge. They can retain stuff. God works on them. Hey, I don't know what to read this week. Hey, why don't you do something else? Why don't you go take your family and, and just start singing hymns? I love driving down the road and without knowing it, I hear in the back of the Yukon, little Jeremiah or little Berea singing hymns. And you know who I don't hear singing it? Rachel. <laughs> uh, but can I tell you something? I mean, I'm being open as a book. I'm, I'm letting you know, when I was younger and we had Rachel, I didn't spend as much time in discipleship with her. I didn't spend as much time doing the songs. I didn't spend as much time doing the things that, that I'm telling you that we should do. Why? Because I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know the importance of it at the time either. Can I tell you something? It's that, it's that lineage of, of knowing Christ and passing it on that's huge. And, hey, if you don't want to sing and you can't uh, read the Bible, you know, why don't you teach your kids how to serve other people? I know uh, Miguel and Elise uh, take their kid and went out to Miss Hopkins and built the whole walkway. You know, that's teaching at a young age that we serve other people. We serve other people. That we, want, we want to train our kids that we trust the Lord, but we also want to train them to believe that the Lord can do mighty things if we trust in him. You know, you're putting trust in them. You're, tr you're doing discipleship by showing people, showing your kids to serve other people. David, we go back here. So some things we can draw from David. David retained his knowledge from the Lord when he was a young, young person. And this proved to be key in his victories later on. Why, why is it important to have uh, a bus route? Because we're reaching people that wouldn't normally get the get knowledge. These kids that are coming in, I guarantee a lot of them wouldn't get to hear God's word. That's important. Why do we have children ministries? Because there's children that need to hear God's word. Why do we need volunteers? Because we have a bunch of children that we would like to reach that hear God's word. Uh, why is church attendance important? So your kids get to hear God's word. Can I tell you something? Uh, we have a rule. We do not do anything sports-wise. There was a conflict with, uh, with uh, Thursday. They had a tournament. I had to call Seth Robinson and say, hey, Rachel won't be in this volleyball tournament if you can't guarantee that she's back before 5 o'clock for her to be here for the last night of the family crusades. Seth Robinson knows that that's important, one, for us, but it's also important for him. But if, it, if he couldn't put a guarantee, she wasn't going. They were going to lose the first day because they weren't going to have enough people. Church attendance, if you don't make it a priority in your house, it's not going to be a priority for your kids. Can I tell you something else? I, I, I get opportunities to go preach. I leave it up to Rachel if she wants to come with us or if she wants to come here. She loves coming here. She loves the people here. But can I tell you something else? I'm, I love the fact that she chooses to go to church. She chooses at age 12 to go to church. And that's not because mom and dad have forced her, but she wants to. And it comes by having it known that we, we do this as a family. So here's some other verses I had written down. Proverbs uh, eight seventeen. I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. Seek me early shall find me. You know, young, young people in God's word, that's early. Early in the morning, seeking God's word. I, I love seeking God's word early, early in the morning, before the traumas of the day start. Before, and, and you laugh, but before the traumas of the day start. You know, there's always something happening. There, there's Jeremiah put a shoe in the toilet or... You know, there's uh, the, dog, the dog ate up the couch or something. And, and that's just this week. And, uh, <laughs> and then, then there's work. And then there's, there's many things you draw off of that just make it hard to study God's word. It makes it hard not to dwell on what's already in your thoughts. So early in the morning, best time I know to get in God's word. Psalms uh, 119.11 says this, Thy word I have hid in thy heart that I might not sin against thee. Can I tell you something? God's word gets hidden in our heart when we spend time in God's word. Uh, I, I try to make sure that I listen to three podcasts every morning. And, and they're just daily devotionals. One, one's like 10 minutes. Another one's like five minutes. And another one is Paul Chapel, which could be anywhere from 15 to 40 minutes. It doesn't matter. But I, I have to hear other people's preaching. I have to hear other things because if, I get, if I'm honest, I get caught up with emotion. get caught up with 
how the day is going. Joey, uh, I'm sure there's times that it's, it's hard not to think about things that are going on right now. So, you know, how do we do that? We, we get in God's word by reading it. We get in God's word by hearing preaching. We get in God's word, and, and we just determine to hear what's there. Uh, here we have, I have down here, when we, when we get God's word into us, it strengthens us. What else does it do? It boosts our confidence in what God can do. You know, I think David, David had knowledge, and uh, when I think about David, I think he was in Deuteronomy, I think of Deuteronomy 31.6. I think he had this on his mind. Be strong and of good cheer. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he is it that doeth good with thee. He will not, not fail thee, nor forsake thee. You know what? I think he believed, you know, not only did, did God say that he was going to provide for the children of Israel, but he ain't going to forsake me. He ain't going to leave me, you know, leave me dry. He ain't going to leave me stranded. He's sitting there, and he sees that man in, in Goliath, the big, mighty man, the one that they're all trembling from. And he's like, my God, my God has this. My God has this. If he can have that type of faith, we can have that type of faith. He didn't even have the whole Old Testament and New Testament to draw off of. You know, we're, we're privileged, yet we're lazy. We're privileged, yet lazy. Can I tell you I'm guilty? Aaron, Aaron uh, I think he would tell you there, it, it takes effort to grow, but it doesn't take very much effort to get lazy. And once, once you get lazy, it gets really hard to get back at it. Uh, one of the biggest things we can do to be bold and, and be for Christ is be in God's word. And I, I compared it in one daily devotion this week is boldness is kind of like abs. Everybody has them. Very few can show them. Because very few people work out enough to have abs. There's abs underneath this flubber over here, but, you know, they're there. You know, you can't have boldness unless you spent some time with Christ and built up your spiritual muscles. You know, a lot of times because we've been lazy we don't have the spiritual muscles that we should have. Flip on over to Mark chapter 6. I want to get this view, uh, 16 real quick. I want to get this view into your head real quick. And this is the fact that there is no object that God cannot move if he wants to move it. You know, we, we, we think of David and Goliath. We think of the big Goliath. And, you know, this is a big man and this is a, a big object. But there's plenty of big objects that God has gone and moved and, and work mightily. And here we go in verse 16, verses 1 through 4, and it says this. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, uh, and had brought sweet spices, and they might come and anoint him. And very, very, verily in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulcher at the rise of the sun, so early in the morning, and they said among themselves, who shall, you, who shall roll us away the stone from the doorway of the sepulcher? Who shall? They're already wondering what, you know, there's a conflict, there's a problem. Who's going to do this? Who's going to do this? Who's going to take care of this problem? Get over here just a little bit more, and we, we read four. It says this. And when they, when they looked, they saw the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. God took care of the object in that, that, that problem. God takes care of the obstacles in our lives if we're just faithful. You know, they could have got walking to that stone and said, man, who's going to roll that rock? We, we can't move it. We can't move it. We, we, can be, we can't move it. You know, look at the soldiers. This man's a giant. We can't fight him. We can't fight him. Hey, my financial situation's bad. I can't handle it. Hey, the health outcome is bad. I can't handle it. Hey, you know, this over here, th this idea of going in the ministry, I, I, I can't do it. No, no, no. Be faithful. Pray about the object and move forward. Mary Magdalene and them, they're, they're going to the rock. They bring up who's going to move, who will roll away the rock? Who will roll away the rock? But yet they, they didn't turn back and walk away and give up. They went there expecting to anoint Jesus, and the rock was rolled away. They could have predetermined that this was a no-go. There was no way we are going to be able to do what we wanted to do because there's no way as two little women they were going to move that great rock. 
You might be standing here today and have a financial circumstance, and you say, there's no way I'll be able to do X, Y, and Z. Be faithful. Keep tithing. Keep working. Keep praying. You know, God has a way of making things happen when you don't think there, think there, think there is any way. You might think that uh, this health outcome that's out there that you might have, there's no hope. You know, God answers prayers. God can also take a health outcome and turn it all the way around. I think of Paul. Paul had a thorn in the flesh that was an obstacle, and he wanted it gone. But God was able to use that thorn in the flesh, that obstacle, and he was still able to be used mightily. Sometimes we take an obstacle and we use it as an excuse to quit. We use it as an excuse to quit. Mary Magdalene and, and Mary, they both decided we were going, and we we're going to go and anoint Jesus. Can I tell you something? They were expecting to be able to do what they set out to do. God took care of the object. Can I tell you something else? When God gives you a desire, when he puts something on your plate, when he tells you to go do something, when the objects come, we need to just be faithful and just go do it. Go back to David. David we see, the ob we see the obstacle in Goliath and said, it is too much for me. But David, you know, the other men said it was too much for them. But David saw God and what God wanted him to see. And look, look at what David said in 1 Samuel 17, 26. So we'll go back to 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel 17, 26. And I spoke about this again. And David spoke to the men that, or, yeah, 26, 26, yeah. And David spoke to the men that stood by him, saying, what shall be done to this man that killeth the Philistine and that take away the reproach from Israel? Israel, For whom is this uncircumcised man that he should defy the army of the living God? The living God. Hey, when we're in line with God and we're doing God's will, we really don't need to fear a whole lot. We don't need to fear a whole lot. Can I tell you something? When we look at, at, at David, he could have easily said, all my brothers are back, you know, backing off. They don't want to do it. There is an imminent danger right there. And he could have said, you know, maybe they're right. No, he says, the living God. He knew who he was serving. He knew who, who had his back. He knew who was the one that could bring him through and could end, end uh, Goliath's reign. It was the living God. We need to have that same faith when it comes to obstacles in our lives. You know, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes. You know, what we do a lot of is we walk by sight, not by faith. I, I still believe that we can push 100 here. I still believe that we can do a lot of mighty things here, but we all got to continue to have that faith like we did for the Crusades. We, we had amazing turnout on visitation. We had amazing turnouts in service in, in and you guys did great, absolutely great. I applaud you. I, I mean, I, I, I was amazed by how much people worked. But everybody had faith that it was going to be a big weekend. If we had that same belief and that same faith, Joey, I think we could fill every chair in this place. We go on just a little bit more, and I had a couple questions I wrote down here. So I said, what are some giants that you're facing? What are some giants that you're facing? You don't need to name them out, but, you know, everybody's facing some sort of giant in their life. It might be a, a financial one, like I said. It might be a physical problem. It might be uh, a relationship problem. Can I tell you something? There is no relationship that cannot be fixed if we're willing to just submit to the Lord. Sometimes we have to take a little humble pride and just be like, okay, you know, we're not going to fight some battles right here, but we're but I'm going to be an open friend to you. I'm just going to be a friend to you. And, you know, sometimes that open friendship, it, it might be one-sided, but it's our job to win people over. I look at uh, some more obstacles, and, and, and the big key is, where's our vision? Is our vision in God's word? Is, it, is our vision in, in what God can do? Or do we have 2020 vision, the failing vision? You two are wearing glasses. You don't have 2020 vision. I put chemical in my eye. I couldn't see for a handful of days. My vision was bad. But, you know, our vision, even when it's good, isn't as good as God's. When we look at, look at things through our own eyes, things look bleak. When we start looking at, at the soldiers and what did not, uh, what, how they would not engage Goliath, 
we see that they had just plain old fleshly eyesight. But we see David. David had a different vision. David had, the, had a vision that God could do mighty things because he knew who God was. David knew God's word. David knew God's promises. Greater yet, David knew God was able to take care of the obstacles. Can I ask you guys? Is there, have you guys have you guys really thought about what's what's hindering what's hindering you in your walk? Can I tell you? I'm gonna be I'm gonna be honest, bluntly honest right now. What hinders my walk right now is the big step of what's next. What's next? This is easy being here. This is easy for me right now. The next step, like pastoring or or moving on, that that's a huge obstacle. Why? Can I tell you something? There's obstacles. There's obstacles. There's where's my family going to be? There is what are we going to do? But obstacles God will take care of. Maybe your obstacle is how can God use me? I have X, Y, and Z as a problem. God can use you. Just trust that he can take care of the obstacle. What's the obstacle for our church for growing? The obstacle for our church to grow is people just being faithful and believing that God can knock out obstacles. There's no reason that we can't grow our bus routes. There's no reason we can't have more, more teachers. There's no reason we can't fill this pews here in these chairs if everybody had the same, same view that God can knock out obstacles. With that being said, I'll hand it over to Aaron.